when we gaze upwards into the boundless blackness of space, with the help of the peaceful loveliness of distant stars shining throughout the universe, there is one query resonating through the emptiness of space. It is a question that has found itself in human awareness for centuries, whispered in legend, bellowed in awe, and analyzed with obsessive curiosity. Are we alone in the universe? With each flicker of celestial light, it seems as if the universe itself bids us to search for answers. For centuries, this question lingered in the domain of philosophical speculation, divine consideration, and fanciful imagination. Poets and philosophers argued it, writers wrote myths about it, and dreamers envisioned life on other planets. But now, science is coming closer than ever to providing concrete insights, thanks in part to a technological wonder now circling high above the Earth, the James Webb Space Telescope, or JWST. Launched as the most sophisticated space observatory in the history of humanity, the JWST is a step beyond our current capability to observe and comprehend the universe. Where earlier telescopes gave us fleeting glimpses, the JWST creates a window of more than ever before, enabling us to look deeper, sharper, and with unprecedented clarity. Its huge golden mirrors and advanced infrared instruments allow it to be a bit like a cosmic magnifying glass, one capable of looking into the atmospheres of planets light years away. It is able to examine the weakest glows of light filtering through other world skies, light that contains an imprint of the elements and molecules in them. Every wavelength, every pale variation of color, is a hint at what these far-off worlds consist of. With this technology, we are opening up a new age of astronomical discovery, an age that may reveal life outside our planet. One of the JWST's most thrilling recent expeditions was to a distant exoplanet called K2-18b. This planet orbits around a red dwarf star called K2-18, a fairly cool and dim star relative to our sun, about 120 light years away from us in the Leo constellation. At such an amazing distance, it is nearly impossible to accept that we are able to observe and study it at all. But through JWST's lens, it has become one of the most discussed planets in contemporary astronomy. K2-18b is especially intriguing in that it sits within its star's habitable zone, the zone where temperatures could conceivably be hospitable to liquid water if the atmosphere were just right. Water, after all, is the basis of life as it exists, and any world with the potential for liquid water is a top priority in hunting for extraterrestrial life. But K2-18b is not a typical planet. Instead of falling into the class of planets known as the Earth type, it belongs to a category that scientists call a sub-Neptune. It is bigger than Earth but smaller than Neptune, so it occupies a middle ground that we don't have represented within our solar system. Therefore, it is both intriguing and confusing. Sub-Neptunes are resistant to simple categorization since they are neither rocky terrestrial planets as in Earth, Venus, or Mars, nor gas giants as in Jupiter or Saturn. Rather, they seem to be something in between, having dense atmospheres and potentially large oceans concealed beneath. Since sub-Neptunes are not here at home, they break our current paradigms for analyzing planetary atmospheres, compelling us to broaden our notions of what a potentially habitable planet could be like. Early findings from the JWST's observations of K2-18b already provided revolutionary insights. Among the most notable observations was the discovery of water vapor in the planet's atmosphere, a key component for life as we know it. The presence of water vapor would have been sufficient to thrill scientists, but the telescope found even more to be amazed about. It found evidence of a molecule called dimethyl sulfide, or DMS. On Earth, DMS is primarily created by plankton, small creatures that live in our oceans. The fact that a planet has DMS in its atmosphere is especially meaningful because, on Earth, DMS is a good biosignature, it's a chemical that nearly exclusively comes from life. To have even a whisper of it so far from home is nothing short of remarkable. In addition to DMS, scientists found methane, CH4, and carbon dioxide, CO2, in the atmosphere of K2-18b. These compounds, particularly when present together, have generated enormous interest. Methane, for example, degrades quite rapidly upon exposure to starlight. 
If it is still found in substantial amounts, then this implies there are perhaps ongoing processes, perhaps even biological, replenishing it. Carbon dioxide, ubiquitous in planetary atmospheres, takes on a much greater significance when found in combination with methane and possible biosignatures such as DMS. In conjunction, they create a chemical broth that opens the exciting prospect of life, or even the possibility of conditions for life, on this far-off planet. One must keep in mind the extraordinary environmental chemistry of K2-18b in making sense of these results. In spite of having a close orbit to its parent star, only 0.18 astronomical units compared to one Australian dollar for Earth from the Sun, its surface will not be expected to be roasted. The reason is that K2-18 is a red dwarf star, which is a category of star that radiates much less heat and radiation than our Sun. Consequently, K2-18b could have surface temperatures like or actually hotter than Earth's, depending on atmospheric composition. Its dense hydrogen-rich envelope might warm things in a way that widens the set of conditions in which liquid water could occur. This close proximity to its star also makes K2-18b an ideal target for close scrutiny. When the planet moves across the star, or directly in front of the star from our viewpoint, some of the starlight passes through its atmosphere on the way to us. Such light has delicate signatures of the gases it traveled through. The JWST recorded this light in precisely scheduled observation windows lasting several hours. By breaking the starlight up into its component wavelengths, astronomers could construct an elaborate spectrum, a sort of atmospheric barcode that indicates what molecules are present. Each gap or absorbed wavelength maps to a particular gas high in the planet's atmosphere, enabling scientists to analyze its atmospheric chemistry from over a hundred light years away. The ramifications of these findings reach far beyond K2-18b itself. In 2021, astrophysicist Niku Madhusudan suggested a new category of potentially Earth-like exoplanets known as Hycean worlds. It is a combination of hydrogen and ocean that defines planets that are surrounded by dense atmospheres filled with hydrogen and have enormous global oceans beneath. The planets could be able to host life even in temperatures much higher than Earth's. Even though surface temperatures may reach as high as 200 degrees Celsius, their thick envelopes of hydrogen might still permit the existence of liquid water below the atmosphere. K2-18b has been one of the most promising candidates for this model, and if it indeed belongs to the Hycean category, it might be concealing a gigantic ocean that accounts for most of its weight. Estimates are that such an ocean might constitute as much as 90% of the planet's overall volume. If oceans like these can be found on K2-18b, they could be hidden under layer after layer of atmospheric material, generating stable conditions in which microbial communities can live. On Earth, we have already found extremophiles, life forms able to survive even the most extreme conditions, from boiling hot hydrothermal vents to acidic lakes. These discoveries have expanded our understanding of life's resilience, showing us that life can survive in places once thought impossible. If microbes on Earth can live in such extreme conditions, then why not on K2-18b or another Hycean world? The idea that vast alien oceans might harbor life, unseen beneath layers of atmosphere and gas, is both humbling and exhilarating. Hycean worlds might also be a sweet spot in the quest for extraterrestrial life for yet another reason. They seem a good deal more prevalent than Earth-sized rocky planets. Their size allows them to be more detectable, and their thick, hydrogen-rich atmosphere could stabilize them for long periods of time. If Hycean worlds are really plentiful in the galaxy, then the chances of finding life somewhere out there skyrocket. Some astronomers even estimate that they might be one of the most abundant forms of habitable worlds in our galaxy, outnumbering Earth-like planets by many orders of magnitude. This suggests that our search for life may need to expand beyond the narrow definition of Earth-like and embrace the broader spectrum of environments where biology could take root. Of course, as thrilling as these findings are, caution is essential. Detecting biosignatures such as methane or DMS is not definitive proof of life. In rare cases, non-biological processes can produce similar molecules. For instance, geologic processes, chemical processes in atmospheres, or even reactions with stellar radiation might produce small quantities of these compounds without biological input. 
To be certain of life, we would require several biosignatures seen together in similar patterns, or even explicit evidence of biological activity. This is an extremely challenging task considering the enormous distances involved. The next steps will be more observations, more sophisticated models, and later new instruments able to take our abilities even further. Telescopes in the future might be able to spot more advanced molecules, possibly even amino acids or other ingredients of life. For the time being, however, the enticing hints of K2-18B provide us with a motive to continue looking, to continue questioning, and to continue constructing better tools to inquire about the universe. The stakes of finding life outside of Earth would be colossal. It would not only solve one of humankind's deepest mysteries, but also compel us to rethink our position within the cosmos. If bacteria, or perhaps even more sophisticated life, exist in the oceans of K2-18b, then life is probably not so uncommon after all. Perhaps it is a byproduct of planetary development, a strand that runs through the galaxy. If the discovery is made, it would raise new questions regarding the origins of life on Earth, whether interstellar ecosystems are possible, and even the likelihood of other civilizations. With the James Webb Space Telescope ongoing, we can only anticipate more revelations regarding K2-18b and numerous other worlds outside our solar system. Every new spectrum, every new molecule identified, is a piece of the cosmic puzzle. Somewhere down the line, we may find the day when we sense unmistakable proof of life in high sea and clouds and ice-shrouded seas on a distant moon, or in the faint murmurs of an extraterrestrial biosphere conveyed across light years of space. Then we shall stay poised at the boundary of cosmic wisdom, looking into the darkness with awe, curiosity, and hope. So as we proceed on this path, let us not forget that any pale spot of light in the sky is potentially a sun to another, a dwelling place to unseen oceans, and maybe even a cradle to life. The hunt is hardly over, in some ways, it has only just started. And as we await the next find, the stars remind us to dream larger, to reach farther, and to keep asking the question that has compelled mankind for centuries, are we alone?